Hi guys, my name's Kay. I work here at TC Liquor in Shoreditch. And I'm coming to you in partnership with The Evening Standard through their Shop London programme, which is helping to support independent businesses like ours. You might have seen our lovely bottle shop on Kingsland Road, which you might be able to hear in the background. It's always busy around here. Uh, but as well as this shop, we've got some other exciting stuff going on in the building. We've got our great cocktail bar downstairs. We've got a lovely roof terrace, which is going to be open this summer for drinks. And then throughout the rest of the building, we put on our famous cocktail classes. At the moment, we're doing those virtually, but they are going to be back in real life this summer. If you're interested in booking one of those, in finding the recipes for any of the drinks we make today, or in buying anything from our online shop, links for all of those should be in the description for this video. I'm going to show you guys how to make a couple of cocktails today. They should be really simple and fun. And if you want any more information, please do hit up our website or come in and see us in person. So guys, we're going to be making a couple of really simple and delicious cocktails together today. I'm going to start off by talking you through some of the equipment that you're going to need, then I'll talk about the ingredients, and then I'll show you how to make them. Now obviously I've got a lovely bunch of proper cocktail kit here, but I don't expect you guys to necessarily have that. Now we'll start off with my shaker. This is called a Boston shaker. This is kind of the usual sort of shaker that we use in bars. It's made of two halves a glass and a tin. If you don't have one of these, just a normal kind of three-piece cobbler shaker will be fine, or really just any container that you can put liquid and ice in and seal. So maybe the cup from a Nutribullet, a Tupperware box, or even a mason jar would work fine for that. With my shaker, I've got a strainer. This is a Hawthorne strainer. It goes in the metal side of my shaker, keeps the ice in and lets the drink out when I'm serving. Obviously, in place of that, you could just use a sieve or a fork or a spoon with holes in it, anything that you can strain your cocktail with. This is my bar spoon. This has got a lovely long handle which allows me to stir and churn drinks a little bit easier. But obviously any spoon would work in place of this. I also have a muddler. This is used for kind of mashing up fruit and other solid ingredients in the bottom of a glass or a shaker. In place of this, you could use the pestle from a pestle and mortar, a rolling pin, or you could just crush those ingredients by hand if you need to. Then I've got a fine strainer. You could just use a sieve in place of this, or you can quite happily get away with just not fine straining your drinks. And then finally, I've got my lovely little cocktail measure. Now this measure has two sides, a single shot or 25 mils on the small side, and a double shot or 50 mils on the large side. There's also some little lines in here which help me to do some other measurements. But as long as you're using the same measuring device to measure all of your ingredients and keeping the ratios the same, you should be fine. So you could use a shot glass, a measuring jug, or anything similar. Finally, we are going to need a knife and a chopping board for cutting up some fruit, and a tea towel for some ice crushing later on. That's going to be all the kit that you guys need for these cocktails. So guys, I'm going to talk you through the ingredients that you're going to need for today's cocktails. We've kept the shopping list fairly short, so that it's going to be a bit easier for you guys to find most of this stuff. Nothing's too obscure or hard to source. Now we're going to start off with some gin. We're using this lovely cabbies gin, which is made by some friends of ours over in Mile End. Particularly a black cab driver named Moses, who is in charge of this company. They make this lovely gin and some rum as well. You might even be able to see Moses driving around London in his black cab if you're lucky. Obviously, you can use any gin in place of that, uh, but a lovely London dry gin is your best bet. With our gin, we've got some dry vermouth. I've got this lovely cocky Americano with Italian dry vermouth. You can use any dry vermouth in place of this. Martini is probably the most famous and available brand, but there are lots of different brands. All vermouths are fairly inexpensive. Just make sure when you're buying it, you're keeping it in the fridge because it is a perishable ingredient. Now, if you didn't want to use gin, you could of course use vodka. And if you wanted to make an alcohol-free version of these cocktails, you could use something like Seedlip, which is an alcohol-free spirit. Now along with our booze, we're going to be using some elderflower cordial. You've probably seen this brand in the shops before, but of course, again, any brand that you can find will be fine. And we're going to need some juice. I've got these lovely little juices which we send out for our virtual classes, but of course, any juice will do. The better quality your juice, the better your cocktails will be. As well as those, you are going to need some fresh ingredients as well. We're going to be using some lemons, some mint, and some rosemary for these cocktails. And of course, you're going to need loads of cube dice. That should be all the ingredients and equipment that you need for these drinks. All right, so the first drink that we're going to be making together is one of my favorites. It is a gin and elderflower julep. Now, a julep's just kind of a type of cocktail that's usually served in a metal cup like this with some solid ingredients, some fruit, and maybe some herbs in the bottom. 
and finished using crushed ice. Now if you don't have a little metal cup like this, then just anything of kind of similar dimensions will work. A mug works really well as it's nice and sturdy and you can stir and muddle in there without any fear of anything breaking. Now we're going to be building this drink, which means we're making it in the same cup that we're going to drink it from. So all of my ingredients are going to be going in here. We're going to start with some of our solid ingredients. The first being some fruit, namely some lemon. For this drink, we want a quarter of a lemon and we're going to cut our lemon into wedges just to make it a little bit easier to portion out. I'm going to start by topping and tailing my lemon, so just cutting either end off. Then I'm going to cut the whole thing in half lengthways and I'm going to cut one of those halves in half lengthways again to give me two nice quarter wedges. I'm just going to take one of these lemon quarters and put it fruit side down into the bottom of my cup and I'm going to use my muddler to give it a bit of a squish. Now as I said, if you don't have a muddler, you can use a pestle or a rolling pin and if you don't have any of those, you can just pick up that lemon wedge and squeeze it by hand. I'm just going to give it a little mash with my muddler. I'm just covering the top of my cup here so that none of the lemon juice hits me in the face. Right, a couple of good squishes and we've got this lovely little squish bit of lemon in the bottom of our cup. I'm going to leave that in there because I want the skin and the flesh as well as the juice. It's going to give me loads of extra flavour. We've got our next solid ingredient which is going to be some fresh mint. So I've got some mint here. Now when we're using mint, we want to make sure that we're only using the leaves, we don't want the stem. So I'm going to pick some of these leaves from the stem, like so. And once I've got myself a nice little handful of mint leaves, before I put them in the cup, I'm going to kind of wake the flavours up. Now I'm going to do that by bruising these leaves and helping to get some of the essential oils out of them. So I'm going to hold them in the palm of my hand and just give them a little slap and a rub between my hands and chuck them in there with my lemon. Now the reason we do that with the mint instead of muddling it is because the mint is quite delicate and if you're too rough with it, it can lose all of its nice flavour and end up really kind of bitter, which obviously we don't want. So there's a good motto to remember when you're using mint and that is bruise, don't abuse. So we've got our squished lemon and our slapped mint. Those are our solid ingredients. Now we're ready to start going in with the important stuff, the liquid ingredients and the booze. First thing we need is some gin. As I said, I'm using this lovely cabbies gin, but any London dry gin would work for this. Now for this drink, we want two shots or 50 mils of our gin. So I'm gonna use the big side of my measure. I'm gonna fill that right up to the rim for 50 mils, and I'm gonna pop it in there with my other ingredients. Now, as soon as that gin goes in there, it's gonna start taking on some of those flavors from the lemon and the mint, and this drink will start getting to work. Now the next thing going in here is gonna be some cloudy apple juice. I've got this lovely little bottle of apple juice. Obviously, you could just buy a carton from the shop. I'm going to give it a shake before I open it. And for this drink, I want one shot of my apple juice. So I'm going to use the small side of my measure. I'll fill that right up to the top for a shot. And I'll pop it in there Oops. with my gin. All right, so we've got two shots of our gin and one shot of our apple juice in there. The final thing going into our gin and elderflower julep is, of course, some elderflower. Now this is just elderflower cordial, so it's syrup or squash, there's no alcohol in here, so we don't need too much of it. I only want half a shot of my elderflower cordial, so I'm just going to use the small side of my measure and fill it about halfway for half a shot, and pop that in there with my other ingredients. So to recap, in my cup I've got a quarter of a lemon, a handful of mint leaves that I slapped, two shots or 50 mils of my gin, one shot or 25 mils of my apple juice, and half a shot or 12 and a half mils of my elderflower cordial. Now to finish this cocktail off, we're gonna need some crushed ice. Now I don't expect you guys to have ice crushers at home. If you do, that's great. If not, we're gonna to have to do this the old fashioned way. So I'm gonna grab myself a clean tea towel. I'm gonna to fill it with a big pile of cubed ice. I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna whack it with something heavy until it's crushed. So, our cube dice is going to get a lot smaller after we crush it and we need enough ice to fill our cup. So I'm going to put a really big pile in my tea towel here. So here we go guys, I'm going to do kind of two and a half nice scoops of ice. I'm going to bundle this tea towel up by the corners, make it all lovely and tight, there we go. And then I just need to grab something heavy and give this a good bash. I've got a lemon squeezer here, but you could use a rolling pin, a saucepan, or even a sturdy ladle. So 
So I'm going to take this little pile of crushed ice, set it to one side and bring my cup back over. And I'm going to take some, but not all of this crushed ice, and put it into my glass. So I'm going to fill my cup almost to the top, but making sure to leave a little bit of room to stir my drink and to leave some crushed ice for the end. So now that I've got that crushed ice in my cup, I can take my bar spoon and use it to give this drink a mix. I'm going to cover the top of the cup with my hand to stop anything flying out. Get the spoon all the way to the bottom where all those ingredients are and use it to kind of scoop them up and stir them with the ice at the same time. This is called churning. So I'm going to scoop and stir like this for maybe about 10 seconds. And while I'm doing this, our crushed ice is going to start to melt, bring all those ingredients together and lengthen out our cocktail. Now to finish it off, I'm going to take the rest of my crushed ice and I'm going to pile it on top of my drink like so. I'm going to use my hands to form it into a little mound. As well as looking pretty, that mound of crushed ice on top is going to help to keep the drink underneath nice and cold and stop the ice that's still in there from melting any further and making our drink any more watery. Now to finish this off, I'm going to grab a straw. These are biodegradable straws. You can put these in your compost bin, of course. Uh, now we're going to pop that in there and for a garnish, I'm just going to use the top of a lovely mint sprig. I'll snap that off brush it against my hand a bit to wake up those flavours and pop it right next to the straw so that I can smell it when I go to take a sip. And there we go, that is our gin and elderflower julep. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. The next drink that we're going to be making is one of my favourites from our new spring menu. It's called a rose and pine martini. Now it's called that for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it has some beautiful botanical, herbal, floral flavours in there, a bit like rose and pine, but also it's got some rosemary and some pineapple in it. Now this one's a shaken cocktail, so we are going to need our shaker. If you're using a Boston shaker like mine, you'll want to start with the glass half of your shaker. Now the first thing that's going to go into our shaker for this drink is going to be some rosemary. I'm going to grab myself some rosemary, and I only need a piece about kind of two or three centimetres long, kind of an inch in old money. Uh, and you just want to grab that and pop that straight into the bottom of your shaker. Now that it's in there, I'm going to use my muddler to give it a little bit of a mush. Now, what I don't want to do is kind of break the rosemary up into loads of little bits. That's just going to make it a bit harder for me to strain it out my cocktail at the end. So a bit like we did with the slapping of the mint, I'm just kind of bruising the leaves using my muddler, giving it a little bit of a kind of muddling before I move on. So there we go. I've muddled my rosemary a little bit. Now I'm ready for my liquid ingredients. First thing going in here is going to be our base spirit, which in this drink, once again, is going to be some gin. So again, I'm going to use my lovely Cabbie's gin. Now this time, I only want 45 mils of my gin. I know the big side of my measure is 50, so if I fill that just shy of the top, there we go, I know I've got 45 mils. So 45 millilitres of my gin. The next thing going in here is going to be my dry vermouth. So I've got this lovely cocky Americano dry vermouth. Vermouth is just a fortified wine, so it's a white wine that's been distilled a second time with a bunch of added herbs and botanicals to give it some extra flavour and some extra strength as well. We don't need too much of our vermouth. In this drink I'm just going to be using 10 mils, so I'm going to use the little side of my measure and I've got a little line in there which is going to help me measure 10 mils. For anyone who's not sure, 10 mils should be about a third of a shot. So if you're using a shot glass, just fill it up about a third of the way for 10 millilitres. So I've got 45 mils of my gin and 10 mils of my dry vermouth. That's all the booze for this cocktail. We do have a couple more ingredients going into the shaker before we add our ice and shake them. The next thing's going to be our sweetener. This is where the floral flavour is going to come into our rose and pine martini. And once again, we're going to be using our elderflower cordial. Now this time, I want 20 mils of my elderflower cordial. I know the big side of my measure is 25, so a bit like I did for the gin, I'm going to fill this just short of the rim to give me 20 mils of my elderflower cordial. There we go. So, in here I've got my gin, my dry vermouth, that little bit of rosemary and some elderflower cordial. We've got one more ingredient, which is where the kind of pine part of our rose and pine martini comes in. It is, of course, some pineapple juice. I'm going to give this a shake before I open it. And I want the same amount of pineapple juice as I had of elderflower cordial. So I'm just going to measure 20 mils of my pineapple and pop it in there with everything else. So that's all my ingredients in my shaker. That little bit of rosemary, my gin, my dry vermouth, 
my elderflower cordial and my pineapple juice. Now the last thing to go in here before I put the tin on and shake is of course ice. Whenever we shake we want cubed ice. If I put crushed ice in here it will just melt really quickly and make my drink watery. For that same reason, when I shake I want to try and use as much ice as possible. If I've got a lot of ice it's going to melt much slower, cool my drink down much faster and I'll have a more controlled dilution. So I'm going to fill this glass all the way up with cubed ice. Once I've got that nice and full, I can take my tin, pop it on at a bit of an angle so that it's flat against my glass on one side and it sticks out a bit on the other. To seal it, I'm going to give it a nice big smack on top. And you can see I can lift my shaker up by the tin now without the glass falling off, which means it's ready to shake. Now, when it's ready to shake, you want to pick it up with both hands, one on the glass, one on the tin, Put it horizontally by your shoulder and you're going to go back and forth nice and hard for about 15 seconds. Here we go. Fantastic. So, I've given that a good shake. You can see my tin's all cold and frosty now. Now when we serve a drink from the shaker, we always serve it out of the tin. So I want to open my shaker this way up. To do that, there's a little trick. I'm going to turn it round so the bit where the tin and the glass touch is pointing away from me. I'm going to hold the whole thing nice and tight around the middle. And I'm going to use the heel of my other hand to whack the rim of my tin on the side. There we go, that will just release the glass. I can take it off and I'll be ready to serve my drink from my tin. Now this is a martini, so I'm going to be using a martini glass. If you don't have a martini glass, anything with a stem will be fine for this. So a wine glass, a champagne flute, a sherry glass, a brandy glass, or even just any small glass that you've got. I'm going to be serving this cocktail straight up, which means with no ice in the glass. And obviously, I don't want the rosemary that's in my shaker either, so I need to strain it. I'm going to start by taking my Hawthorne strainer and popping that spring side down in my tin. And I'm going to take my fine strainer and hold that over the glass. I'm just going to double strain this cocktail through both of these strainers into my glass. Beautiful. And this is just going to help me to catch any of those little bits of rosemary that make it through this first shake. I'll just give this a little stir to get any last bits into my glass. Beautiful. And then finally, before I drink this cocktail, I just need to garnish it. So I'm going to use this lovely little bit of rosemary and you might not have these at home, but I've got some cute little clothes pegs and I can use one of those to peg a little sprig of rosemary to the side of my glass. Now, as well as looking really pretty, that sprig of rosemary is going to give me a lovely big aroma when I go to take a sip, which is going to boost the rosemary flavours in this cocktail. So there we go, guys. That is our rose and pine martini. Cheers. All right, guys. So. I hope you've enjoyed making these cocktails with me and that of course you enjoy drinking them. Now if you want to find the recipes for these, then as I said you can hit the link in the description to find all our how-to pages as well as a link to our online shop and a link to book one of our virtual or real life cocktail classes. Once again, I've been Kay, I'm here at TT Liquor in Shoreditch and we're really grateful to be working in partnership with the Evening Standard on their Shop London programme. Do come in and visit us if you're local and once again, thank you very much, guys.